Hour number two, good to have you with us. If you missed our discussion to open the show, it's simple. I'm not ready to give up the ship. I, Tigers are five and a half out. Mayton adjusted losses, it's three and a half. So you can go back and listen to that. I want to get into today's a bit of an anniversary. And again, I don't know that anyone's opinion will change or should change. But today marks the 20th anniversary to possibly the worst singular draft pick in the history of this town in Darko. Now, whether you still feel that way or not, I don't know whether it, it, it's, I guess to me, it's one of those things. If you make a list of the worst picks in this town, the further out you get, sometimes perspective changes. So I wanted to have this conversation. I mean, part of it is, Look, the Pistons absolutely should have won two titles, not one. And they would have done it with Darko, without him. It didn't matter. They had it. If Darko was any good, would it have changed? Maybe. But he would have, he would have had to have been incredibly advanced. The problem? The guys who went 3-4-5 were all advanced. With Carmelo, D. Wade, Chris Bosh. All right. But if it's not Darko, what is the singular worst draft pick in this town's history? All-time draft bust. Now, I want to be clear about how I view terming it a bust. I hate when a player simply doesn't live up to where they were taken, but they're still good, and you call them a bust. That I don't like. I think to qualify for the list, you have to be hot garbage. You have to be terrible. A total waste of skin. Awful. Non-functional. Cannot make money playing sports bad. So if we go by that, here are some of the names I thought of. Like, let me give you an example. Okay, Joey Harrington is one. You took him in the top three. He's your quarterback. He simply couldn't play. He was terrible. His teammates hated him. Fans hated him. He had an oddball personality and, once again, couldn't play at all. Was not an NFL starting quarterback caliber player. He was for one day of his life when he came back here with the Dolphins and beat you. But Joey Harrington on that list. Andre Ware on the list. From a football perspective, not life, Andre Ware couldn't read. He had no understanding of an NFL playbook. No understanding of defenses. No understanding of, of, of how to recite the language of the plays. He was terrible. They drafted him out of Houston where they flashed up play number one, two, three, or four. It was like Tech Mobile. Andre Ware was a total bust. You know, it, you'll have some Tiger ones. I mean, maybe the, the, the biggest one you go back and look, like I pulled these up, like Matt Wheatland took the kid eighth overall in 2000. He never made it above A ball. A ball, total bust. For the Tiger geeks out there, like Kyle Sleeth, another total bust. But what, is there any way to outdo Darko 20 years later? And second of all, if we're doing the, okay, Darko's number one, then who is the second biggest draft bust in the history of this town? 20-year anniversary that you took Darko. Now, where I think it would have changed your fortunes, clearly, is instead of just making the Eastern Conference Finals in continuum and being chum, being fed to LeBron James, the shark, maybe you get one. Maybe you get another Finals appearance. Maybe you win one. I mean, if Darko was a star, yeah, it may have changed just about everything. In many ways, you drafted a dead guy, just like the Celtics with Len Bias. But Darko didn't die. He was just dead functionally for basketball. He was terrible. So I just wonder, all right, is Darko still number one? And if he is, who's number two? I mean, Kenny, I did some of these. The Red Wings, it's tough to find because they do such a good job. But like Jakob Kindle, maybe. Uh, you got to go back to 1985 with like Brent Fedick. Like they don't have a lot. They don't. Philip Sedina. Okay, that's, that's, that's my most recent example. And and you know what? It's it's 
if there were three draft busts you would discuss with the Red Wings, it'd be Zadina, Kendall, Fedek. I mean, we were all were excited Zadina fell to them. We thought we got a steal. He has been a big, fat nothing burger in his life here. Just nothing. Very fair. 248-539-9797. David, I've given some of the names. I don't want to give them all. But I'm interested, okay, is Darko still number one in your mind 20 years later? And if he is, who's number two? I'm going to be honest. Yes, Darko's number one. It may not be fair that he's number one because he's only number one because of what everyone else around him did. And I know at the time I wanted Carmelo. Not a lot of people really were talking that other they wanted Wade or Bosch or stuff like that. So for me, because of what everyone else did, yes, he's number one for me. But another guy on the list would be Mike Williams, wide receiver out of USC. And here's why I say Mike Williams, because he was the third receiver taken in consecutive years after sitting an entire season at USC the year before. He was still selected number 10 overall. He was gone after – Two years. David, half the teams in the league didn't even have them. as he, did, he wasn't even a wide receiver to them. He wasn't even on draft boards. That's a great selection. Because he was a 10th overall. He was a total waste, total nothing burger. Out after two years. Yeah. Big Mike Williams. Yeah, 1,700 could, career yards. That's crazy. That's just career yards. That's nuts. Calvin got that in, what, one season? How many years in the NFL did he have? He had a total, let me go back to it, I think four or five seasons. Wow. That works. Yeah, four seasons. That works. Yep. Now, I'm not going to give all the names. I want to keep it fun, let you guys call in with the suggestion. But it is the 20th anniversary of Darko being drafted today. Is that still the worst draft pick in this city's history? And has your perspective changed on it at all? Not that it should. I'm asking. Now, if Darko's not number one, who is? But if we accept that he is, who's number two? David submitting Mike Williams to the table. See, I think Joey Harrington's up there. I mean, how underwhelming can you be as a top three quarterback? Joey Harrington is essentially Zach Wilson. Can't play. Can't play. And he was, remember that billboard? that Oregon put up for him in New York for the Heisman? to promote him for the Heisman. Yeah, but playing in college is one thing. But that's what I'm saying. But but the Lions seem to get enamored with those type of guys. You name Andre Ware, another Heisman guy. They got enamored with those guys but didn't realize, oh, they can't actually play NFL football. Now, Kenny, a little bit younger perspective, but the worst draft pick. Now, it's 20 years since Darko. But what if Darko's won, who's the next worst? Darko's one. There was a couple that just came in on the calls. I don't want to spoil them, but um, don't don't for, stay away from it. For me, it's it's it could be Zadina. That's just me talking out loud. You're as a selfish hockey guy. Hockey guy. That's you're, your you're, problem. You're right, but there was so much expectation of him in the hockey community. Going, how did he fall to us? That's crazy that he fell all the way to us. And Ken Holland's a genius. He picked him up, and then that was maybe what was that the last pick that Ken Holland ever made? I think He's it might terrible. have been. He's absolutely terrible. He's a fourth liner at best. I mean, and that's fine, but not no, for pick not number. Fine. It's can, not fine for where they took him. Can I just offer one for consideration, if I may? Now, I know it is not going to be number one, nor should it. And it likely will not win number two. But I just have to hearken back. The Pistons drafted a man with narcolepsy. And I, I can't let that go. Walter Sleepy Sharp at 32 overall. You drafted a human being who didn't know whether he'd be awake moment to moment to play professional basketball for you. Walter Sharp never played, never had a career. I, again, I understand there are bigger busts, but I will never let that one go. The man had narcolepsy. I'm just... Throwing that out there. Right. It's different when you have a guy that, you know, he may not just have the energy or the 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 it thing on the court. No, this guy may not. He may be sleep on the bench. Just saying. Awful. You drafted a player who was asleep or drowsy most of the time. Can't do it. 
That's it. That's it. I'll let it go. I just had to make mention of it. It's one of my favorite, non-favorite bits in my in my life in this town. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Now, let me get some of the people in the mix. Twenty years to the day Darko got drafted. If that has been dethroned as the worst pick, who is it? But if it's still number one with a bullet, who is the second worst pick in what we will call the Darko era? Let's go to Jason, 971. What's up, Jason? How are you, bud? Good. How are you? This one's for you, Mike. Yes. All you have to do is drive an hour to East Lansing and talk to a few people about Charles Rogers, oh. and clearly you know not to draft the guy. Correct. Absolutely correct <laughs> on all accounts. And if, I can, and if I can add another thing, I heard the comment earlier about Mike Williams. If you draft a decent receiver at number two, Mike Williams never gets drafted. Right. Say like Andre Johnson. Andre, exactly. My favorite fantasy football player ever. Yeah. No, I mean, Charles, the worst thing for him was to be close to home. But anyone who was sure. around that program at that time, it, l- listen. Fabulous college receiver. He had a lot of problems, but quitting on the field was one of them. I wish there was tape of his last game in Happy Valley where he openly just quit. It was like Cam Newton in the Super Bowl. Fumble. Nope, not me. Not today. Not happening. You couldn't bring him here, and they did. And the reality is, look, he had he had the big first game. There was a lot of hope. The injuries derailed him, but he had more problems than that, clearly. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. We're gonna get the people. David can get the ticket text rolling. Twenty years to the day, Darko descended upon this town. Is it still the worst draft pick in this town's history? And if it's not, who is?